everybody and welcome back to all the mods ace today what we're going to be doing is working on productive bees and mechanism reactors we need to start producing antimatter which is kind of one of the only other things we're kind of missing from getting ourselves the atm star there's a bunch of other stuff but this is the one that's going to take a bit of time to produce enough to make as many stars as we want so we're going to start with bees because why not they're very simple to set up i've got more or less everything i need right here and oh yeah what i want to do actually first is actually get ourselves a different method of flight as you know we're using the flight augment on the supremium chest plate but i want to swap that out for the health boost augment then if i look up a ring we should be able to craft ourselves the resonant ring right here which is the best tier ring and it provides us creative flight using power. And of course we have wireless power and we're producing so much of it, it's not that big of an issue. Here we go, angel ring. And all we have to do now is to put this in the angel ring slot. There, you need more FE to fly charge your ring. Yeah, it'll charge in here now. So you can see the red bar done. Now we have creative flight, but let's take off the chest plate and swap out the flight augment for our health boost augment. And that will give us an extra set of hearts. Pretty nice. Right, so let's have a look down here. The bees should have produced a little bit more honeycomb since. Oh, wow, that's actually a good bit there. Uh, I have these guys here just temporarily just working so I can actually make all of the different things we're going to need, like the upgrades. But what I want to do first then is get ourselves a controller, ME interface, and some connectors. And we're going to stick the ME interface right here if the world wasn't as laggy. I've been trying to get rid of some of the lag in the world. It has not been great. I've actually turned off the ore processing system. Because uh, I think we're at a point now where we don't really need to worry that much about resources. Um, we have so many ingots. We only have like more than half a million each of in each ingot. And if we need more, we can just smelt down the raw ingots. Like raw aluminium. If we smelt this all down, we'll have 2.3 extra aluminium ingots. So um, this is the way I want to set this up. And what I want to do is put one underneath each one of these hives. We have six hives here. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to use this guy to pull out the, the combs that the bees produce and insert in glass bottles so we can actually extract out the honey that they also produce. Now this is the north side, so we want to disable the north connection so it's not connected to these feeding slabs. I've never used these before, but apparently you can put the material that the bee needs to pollinate on in here and then put a simulator upgrade inside the hive and that way the bee won't have to come out of the hive saving on some resources. That way your world won't be as laggy. So I also need some cable and now we're just going to connect all these together. And then we just need to do some routing in the actual like controller itself. But that shouldn't be that big of an issue. So what I want to also do is put down some powered centrifuges. So I'm just going to put these down like right here. Oh, I should have made it a little bit longer. Oh, we've broken into the sky here. We should be able to fill this in a tiny bit there. Yeah, that's fine. So I also then want to put a connector on top of each one here, and that's more or less it. So then we're going to put the controller right here. We also need to give it power. So if we just grab out some cable and a point, I'm not going to bother trying to route the power through the cable as well. I'm just going to run the power cable underneath. There, that should be good. So what I want to do is connect up an uh, connector to the interface here, and I also want to grab out some glass bottles. We don't actually have that many, so I might need to craft a good bit. Oh, we have a ton of these. Oh, never mind. I thought we had a ton of those witch hats. Uh, we'll just use regular glass bottle for now. We just need a couple stacks because we just need to put like one stack in each hive. And then I have a crafter in the basement over there it's set up to already turn the bottles into honeycomb blocks and then the bottles will go back into the system. So we're just going to hold on to a stack of bottles here. And once this thing comes online, it should put the glass bottles in here. Right? I don't know why it's taking so long. But we're just going to connect that there. And yeah, we can actually just leave it on one connection and just run the cable across the top here. Yeah, that'll do. So now it comes the fun part configuring this controller so we're going to say channel one is going to be items so create and then what we're going to say is me interface is going to extract this will extract that the stack of bottles and we're just going to whitelist it to only say bottles are going to be able to be pulled out of this guy and then they're going to be inserted into each one of these hives and we also need to make sure we whitelist it as well because i don't want anything to go wrong even though they're not and should happen but just be on the safe side now for the powered centrifuges, we're going to need another item channel. And this time we're going to have an extract on the hives. And we're going to say stack. And I'm just going to copy the connector and just paste it into each one. Yeah, they should all face down the way. So that's fine. So then the power centrifuge, we're just going to say insert 
and then copy it and then paste it into each one of them. We have nine of them. There, so the combs that come out of the hive should just go straight into the powered centrifuge. And then we need another item channel. And this time we're going to say extract from the hot, this powered centrifuges. And this time it's going to be inserted into the ME interface. Now we need another channel because by a byproduct of uh, processing up the cones, we're going to get a fluid. So XNet fluids, same thing again, we're going to create and we're going to extract. <laughs> Since I don't know what kind of fluids the combs are going to be producing as a byproduct, like I think some of the like ender ones but will produce like liquid chorus. Uh, we're just going to dump it all in a trash can. There's no point even trying to save it. Because I don't think we need it. If we need it, we'll just turn it back on and then leave it. But we can put a trash can there and then say all of the fluid exports will just go insert here. There we go. And that should be more or less everything here set up. I don't think there's anything else we need. So if this guy has finally got the glass bottles, no, he didn't. And this guy is online. So why isn't the glass bottles being exported? Uh, I don't know. Maybe they can't stack to 64 for some reason. Let's just try 16 at a time. Well, the bottles got sucked out. So they should have went into some of the hive. Oh, I missed this one. Oops. Uh, right, I'm just running cable down here. You know what we'll also do is for the extract of the glass bottles, I think we might be able to do a round robin insert. Yeah, there we go. So let's insert round robin. That way they'll all be able to get uh, bottles each. Oh, and you can see we have now produced wax, but it's not going back to the system. I've run a long cable. Oh, I know what's wrong. I need to put a P2P tunnel on this guy. I don't think I should have needed to do that, but we'll see. Let me just check in here. Right, I did connect them just off of that. So, you know what? Actually, we're just going to route this up the way. I'm not going to bother connecting a new P2P tunnel. There's no point. Now, once the network boots, these should disappear and glass bottles should be inserted in. And then we should have no more issues. And then all we have to do is start breeding our bees. Which we can actually do down here. So in here, we have a breeding chamber. I have a couple of bees already. We do need to head to the nether and get ourselves a glowing bee and I think a soul bee. Uh, I can't remember what actually comes out of the soul hive. <coughs> the ghostly bee. Do, do I actually need this guy? I don't know why I have that bookmarked. Maybe I don't need it. I'm sure we'll find out a reason for it. But anyway, what we want to do is basically follow the chain that's inside the quest book here. What we want to do is end up with all the modium, unobtainium, and vibranium. So we just need to follow the quest line here to get ourselves a slimy bee to make an emerald bee, and then use a diamond and slimy to make the emerald, and then ender and all that. It's a long process, but it should be easy enough to do. I think the, breed, uh, the bee breeding chamber also needs power, so we're just going to plug this in right here. Yeah. We're also going to need a incubator to actually turn these bees into adults. Yeah, there we go. So let's head to the nether and get ourselves our glowstone bee and then head to the end and get ourselves our draconic bee. So to do this, we just need to put the hive down and then get ourselves out a honey treat. I bought a few of them off of a villager who, well, is a beekeeper. Right click this on and then it'll take a bit of time, but we have 33 hours and a time in a bottle, so we should be able to speed this up, no problem. And then we just wait. A bee should appear. You can see there's a timer at the top. So when that drops to zero, a bee should spawn. Can I make this go faster? Yeah, we can. Oh, I can add additional treats to make it go faster. Okay, that's cool. So we should get a glowstone bee. There we go. That's all we need from here. So we can destroy this. And now we need to head to the end. The end highland works. Yeah, there's an ender bee right there. But what we want to do is put down the obsidian nest, right click, and then we'll just give it a ton of treats. So that's actually a lot easier than trying to speed up at a time in a bottle then we just need to wait 20 seconds uh draconic bee perfect so i should have enough honeycomb already to be able to make a few simulator upgrades since those bees in there have been going for a while so if we look up comb we have 300 of it that's a whole stack of blocks that's actually pretty good so base upgrade that's a honey treat that's okay we just need at least six of them and uh, we're gonna need more of them anyway for making pro uh, speed upgrades and productivity 
but we'll just grab out all six of these guys here and all we have to do now is just add them into the hives now the bee won't come out of the hive and we'll now use a feeding slab if i just grab out another one so if we put this in here now the bee will pollinate off of this and we'll never have to come out of the actual hive itself which is really really nice now we need to do the same for the rest so the first thing we need to do is actually look at what we need for, let's say, the Old Nomadian Bee, since he's the first one we need. Withered and Ancient. Ancient Bee comes from right-clicking a Diamond Bee with a block of Netherite. A Diamond Bee comes from an Ender and a Lapis. We have the Ender. So a Lapis is a Blue Bandit and a Redstone. A Redstone Bee is made with a Chocolate Mining Bee and a Glowing Bee. Now, we have a Chocolate Mining Bee, but he's currently inside the Sand Nest. So how do we get him to come out? Oh, we just need to get this thing to hit zero. And that should work. Oh, you probably won't come out because it's nighttime. There we go. So it seems they use any type of flower. So we'll just grab that a few poppies. And we'll put those in here. So bee cages right here. Poppies in here. And then we just need to say, where is he? Glowing and chocolate. And give it a bit of time. If you see that's going to make a redstone bee. Oh, we can see that we can. Oh, it doesn't work yet. Never mind. But it's going to take a while, so let's just speed this up. Might as well use up all the time we have. Boom, and we're just going to stop the process there because now we have ourselves a redstone bee. Now, are you a fully grown bee? No, you're not. Oh, I've lost the bees. They've escaped. All right. So we're just going to grow him up. So redstone bee in here. I think I put honey treats in there to make him grow faster. I might have to go make more of these. Well, actually, they're not that expensive. They're pretty cheap to make. And this does accelerate the growth. Here we go. We have a fully grown redstone bee. Now, using that redstone bee combined with a blue banded bee should make us a lapis bee. There we go. We have ourselves a lapis bee. Now we just need to grow him up. There we go. And now we'll combine him then with the ender bee. Now, does the ender bee require anything special? No, nope, it just seems to be all flowers. And there's our diamond bee. So now we just need to accelerate the growth on him. Done. Put you down right Whoa, your texture was broken. But there we go. We got ourselves an ancient bee. And we combine the ancient bee and our withered bee. Which comes from right-clicking a skeletal bee with a wither rose. And the way to get skeletal bees. And the same for zombies. You need to put a hive in a dark enclosed area. So there was a spot over here on the mountain that I had. Since I had this place not lit up. I just dug a hole in the mountain. Put a hive in. And then just wasted a couple of days. And eventually they did spawn. So that's how you get them. Skeletal bee, right click at you, withered bee, and then we need to breed the two of these. And that's our Olimodium bee. Now, to get ourselves a vibranium bee, we need to combine the ancient bee and a draconic bee. So we're going to need to actually get some draconic dust first. Meaning, we need our draconic bee to actually start making ourselves some combs. Now, what block does this guy, this guy pollinate on? A dragon egg. So, let's grab ourselves out an egg. We have 19k of them. A bit ridiculous. Find ourselves one, so we're going to say this is going to be Unobtainium, Vibranium, Oldemodium. So this guy right here, Dragon Egg in, and I think we can just put the bee straight in. So I think I'm actually using the Draconic bee. No, I'm not. Draconic in, and now he's inserted in. So now we just need to wait for him to produce us some comb. And sometime later, we finally got ourselves some Draconic dust. So uh, how do we get the Draconic bee out of the hive now? Can I just put that in here and it'll just pull him out? Oh yeah, that is the case. Uh, there he is. So, we want to combine the Draconic Bee now with the Aldemodium. No, with the Ancient Bee, who's already in here. So, Draconic and that will make Vibranium. The Aldemodium Bee is fully grown up now, so we just need to wait for this guy. So, let's just speed this up a tiny bit. Oh wait, no, it's the dust. I forgot about that. And any second now, we should have our Vibranium Bee. There we go. And yeah, we can stop him making more. So the Olimodium bee will go in here and we'll just throw the Vibranium bee in here to start growing up. And then what we need to do is we grab out some ingots here. We need to grab out Olimodium and Vibranium ingots. No, Unobtainium, not Olimodium. So the Olimodium bee will use Vibranium and the Vibranium bee will use Unobtainium. So we just need to speed this guy up now as well. There we go. And put these in here and then they should make ourselves a uh, Unobtainium bee. And that's all the bees then. We don't need to really worry about anything else. And actually, since we're done with the Draconic Bee, let's throw him back inside his um, hive here. There we go. Now, for the Olimodium Bee, 
or unobtainium. Did they just require the block that they use? Yeah, it seems so. Now, I don't know if the fact that they're in a simulation does daytime or nighttime matter. Because if you look in here, they are diurnal, meaning they only work throughout the day. But I'm wondering if that doesn't matter anymore since we're using a simulator upgrade. We're going to have to see if that's the case. Uh, vibranium and then unobtainium. There we go. So are these guys done? Not yet. We need to speed them all up. There we go. So unobtainium. Oh, it's making it. You might as we might as well make a few of the bees. There we go. So three unobtainium bees, and we might as well make a few more of the other ones, just so we have plenty of them to work in. And I don't think it really matters. I think they'll just go in right now, and it's fine. So about the bees working regardless of it's day or night with the simulation upgrade. Yes, they do need it to be the right time of day for them to work. It was nighttime. I tried to make him go faster by using the time in a bottle, and he didn't start producing combs until I slept. So, yes, it does matter what time of the day it is for them to work. And also, for some reason, you get a higher chance output of Draconic Dust if you are to put the comb in a heated mixer from Create. It's a 30% chance in the centrifuge, but it's a 70% chance in the mixer. So I don't know why it's such a high chance now. And I think it's full of honey now as well. So I need a bucket. Yeah, so we got 10 this time. And that's it. All the bees are pretty much set up, ready to work. Right. Time for mechanism. So we have a portal over here that will bring us out to our floating oil rig thing out here. So we should be far enough away. It's not that far away from our main base, but hopefully it's a far enough away in case there's a meltdown and radiation starts to spread in the area. Now, we've set this up multiple times, so let's do this fairly quickly. Okay, there we go. We have ourselves all our reactors set up and ready to go. The only thing I need to do is add the fuel in. At the moment, I'm currently adding the coolant in. Um, I've been making this sodium for a while and we're actually used up an entire one, but we're almost full now. So I think there's enough in there to get started with. So what we need to do is just come over here and connect up these tubes to start putting the fuel in. And we've been making quite a bit of fuel, so we shouldn't have any issues here. Now, the thing is, we're going to have to run the uh, waste that comes out of this guy underneath all of these guys here out somewhere here. So I'm going to need a lot more tube than just that. So let me have like another 200 of it. And we're going to line it all up the same place right here. And we're going to have ourselves an SPS right here then once we 
are made enough of the polonium and plutonium because we need that for making the FPS. So to get this to work, if we have a look here at waste, we have nuclear waste, which comes from uh, the reactor, as you can see right here, and we can either use that in an isotopic centrifuge or a solar neutron activator. The solar ne neutron activator makes polonium and the centrifuge makes plutonium. And the plutonium, when solidified, will also be used in here along with the polonium to make the SPS. And I'm thinking we're going to need more polonium than plutonium. So we're probably going to have two of these guys here making polonium and then one of them making plutonium. And where are you back? Because I'm this place doesn't have the sign to stop these guys from showing up. They're just appearing everywhere now. And the lag in the world is back. So I don't think turning off the ore processing system actually helped. All right, so the cables run through. And I think we'll just use the center one as the solar neutron activator. Oh, wait, no, not the solar neutron activator, the centrifuge. So we'll craft ourselves a centrifuge. And I don't know, have we got everything we need for the solar neutron activators? No, we haven't finished making HPE. So we're going to have to go make a tiny bit of substrate now. Uh, actually, we're already making tons of substrate. We need to turn that substrate into the HTPE. So we're going to need to get liquid ethylene. Now, of course, we're making plenty of ethylene back at our base in the ore processing, which is mechanism. I think you see we've got quite a bit of it stored up in here, which is nice. Now, I think it comes out as a liquid back here. Yeah. And then it gets turned back into a gas right here. Um, so what we can do is if we manage to clear a bit of a space back here, can I get back here somehow? So a pressurized reaction chamber, and we just put this down like right here. We need to get ourselves like a stack of substrate. So I think, is that connected to the system? It is connected to the system. So substrate go in, and then that gets converted with liquid ethylene and oxygen. Ooh, am I making oxygen anywhere? I think we're making an oxygen byproduct there, but... You know, I'll just make uh, some myself. So liquid ethylene in here on the left. I don't know why that's connecting to the... Oh, that is the ender tank, which is already full with ethylene. That's going over, I think, to the turbines. So we're just going to disconnect that. And you are full with liquid ethylene. Now we just need to get water, so a sink. And we can just have the water come in from up top here. We also need some power. And now we're slowly making ourselves HTPE. And then all we have to do is put that in, in a enrichment chamber and that will make us the sheets. I need to give this thing some upgrades to make it go faster. So now if we look up solar, we should be able to make ourselves a good few solar instrument activators. I'm going to craft a pattern for that now. And eventually we are going to need like three or four of them. So we're just going to make three for now. Right. So all we have to do is basically put the centrifuge, I think, down right here. And that will get the waste plugged into it. So we just need to make sure we configure this thing correctly. So no items. Gas is in the back, out the front. A centrifuge, same thing, so no items, gas is in the back, out the front, and then solar. Now, these guys also have to go into a pressurized reaction chamber with, I think, uh, fluorite dust? I need to double check that. Yeah, so fluorite dust in a pressurized reaction chamber, and then after we've made enough polonium, we can, of course, make the super uh, critical phase shifter, and then start using that polonium that we're converting from the waste to start making antimatter. Right, let's get this set up now. So we need pressurized reaction chambers. And I think we're going to need like three of each. And there we go. Now the thing is to get the fluorite over here. How are we going to do that? I guess an ender chest is probably the best way to do it. Or should we use a dimensional chest? Yeah, I, I think just a basic ender chest should do. And we'll go with like a light gray color just in case. Uh, I mean, it's similar to the fluorite. So, yep. So there should be nothing in this already. So that should be good. And we just need to put this on top of each one. We'll also get a pipe. Since each one of these also require water, I'm going to use a universal pipe so I can plug power and water in through the bottom. That will make it so the sides of the machine are going to be like unoccupied. So it should look a lot cleaner. I'm also going to have to run power. Oops, I missed a spot. Uh, and to actually make this come forward one. And uh, this guy here also requires power. So I'm just going to have to plug it in there. And make sure it's not connected to that because I don't want any waste going anywhere else. Oh, yeah, these guys also make a byproduct of a spent nuclear waste. So we're going to have to deal with that. Um, I forgot about that. So maybe we will have to have that come out the front and over to a waste collection area, which I'm going to also set up now in a second. Uh, the only thing I need to do down here is grab a sink and a point. I already have the point. I just need an extra sink. So we'll just put the sink right here and the point right here. Extract and extract. I'm going to just give it an upgrade. There we go. 
So for the waste, we're going to be putting all the waste barrels on either side of the island here. So are we done with this now? Can we actually get rid of this? Almost. Let's just set up the waste collection over here for now. And then once we've finished with the coolant, I'll be able to build one right here. So the way this is going to be set up, if we turn on our chunk borders, how much space do we have? Okay, we pretty much have the entire width of the thing here. So let's go say uh, around here is the center of the whole island. I think this line right here is it. So if we just say three in from the edge or two in from the edge, and we'll make it about like eight wide. That's seven wide. You know, actually seven wide is good. Get out our builder's wand. And now we just need to, I don't know, go kind of the length of the whole boiler system here. We do want to make sure we have tons of storage here. You know, let's go in two more this way and then a bit more this way. Yep, so like that, and then get out our wand, but we'll put our pipes in the offhand and place this on top. Swap it out for the pipes or for the, the tanks or waste barrels, whatever they're called. That in the offhand, stack this on top, stack it on top again. Seems we're out of waste barrels, we need to get a few more. And then pipes and then more barrels. Just keep doing that until you stacked up enough. Then all you have to do is in one corner, just remove these, make sure there's nothing in the barrels, and then just put this right here so they're all connected. And then just find the center, run this out, down, and underneath, and then we can connect it to the front of each one of these machines. Also, make sure this thing doesn't connect. Now, for the configuration of it, what we want is items in the top, items out, I think, probably the right side, because I wasn't going to have them in the out the front, but, of course, we're going to have waste come out the front now. So... Don't also eject out the right. Energy is fine, fluid is fine, and gas is we want in the back and out the front. And now we just can we can just copy that now. So configurator, we can just copy that between each machine. Since you should be all doing the exact same thing. All right, so now they're connected to the waste barrels, so we should be pretty much good to go. So you go there, and you're just going to pump in the back. Oh, this thing's on wrench mode. So you're going to extract. You're going to extract, and then the same for the other one. And since they're going to be auto-ejecting out the right, we'll just grab a random ender chest and just have it all pump into the system. It is out the right, isn't it? Yes. So how are the coolants doing? Okay, they should be fine. Let's start off with this one over here. We'll start from left to right. We also need to make sure we include some safety features. Um, so let's actually do that now. So we'll just include them right here. So hopefully nothing goes wrong. So break this here, and this is where the logic adapter is going to go. Oops. We right click this guy here. We want it to send out a redstone signal when there's a high temperature. And hopefully this will send out a redstone signal now. So we'll just grab out a piece of stone or something. Yeah, we'll just put a piece of stone there. Two pieces. And then we'll put a piston right here. And then a piece of gravel. And then we need an observer on this level here. So we're going to put that there. Observer is going to face in this way. Is this correct? I think so. And we just put the redstone there. That should connect. Uh, hopefully this is the right configuration. And it actually will detect. But that will go on there. And then we want it to be activation. Observer. Then we want to face this way. Hopefully this goes the right way. Nope. Is that the right way now? Yes. So you heard the reactor turn on for a split second there. So that's it. So when the reactor is on and this thing exports out a redstone signal. It will then automatically pump this up. This guy will detect and then turn off the reactor. Pretty simple. Now we need to do that for the rest of them. Okay, if I've done everything right, this should work as well. It's too tight of a gap, but the redstone should come out of here into the piston, push up the gravel, and then this redstone signal should go in here and activate the reactor. So, I think we're ready to turn it on. Now, I think a burn rate with the current thing that we have, a burn rate of 0.1 is going to be too low. So let's turn on a burn rate of 1 and turn on the reactor. Now, what the thing we want to see happen is superheated sodium coming out of the pipes. Make sure there's nothing building up in here. We want superheated sodium coming out, going into this guy here. And then the steam that's being produced going into the turbine, which there is a tiny bit of steam build up right now. You can see the blades slowly turning. The higher we put the burn rate, the more steam will be produced and the faster the thing will run. So, we just need a bit of time to fiddle with the settings and figure out what's the best burn rate. Well, I think we're at a stable point right now, but it's not as high as I would like it to be. We're only at a burn rate of 30. I think we can definitely go way higher, but unfortunately, I think our throughput of our coolant is not high enough. Meaning, I might need to add more ports to add more coolant in. 
because as of right now this is not working and actually now that i think about it this is actually also connected here providing with extra sodium so that's probably why the number was going up right um yeah that's fine so 30 does seem to be the right number to be at because the coolant lumber is not going up or down and this guy here seems to be good and the actual turbine is producing quite a bit of power 1.3 million we know we can do better than that but Unless I built another boiler on top of this guy, I think we might be okay. So let's get ourselves 30 set up on this. Hopefully this does not cause any issues. And this should stabilize. Yep, it stabilized there. And then the same thing here. Since every setup here is the identical, it shouldn't have any issues. And there we go. So now we are producing a bit of waste, which is now being converted into polonium. So you can see that's going in here. But now we need to head back to base and start making crushed fluorite. Which, you know what? We can actually just do over here. So we'll just run power up here. Put the crusher right there. Up above it, then we can have ourselves an interface, which will have fluorite. It'll take a, a second for the network to reboot. But pipe and then wrench. Tell it to extract. Did we give it an upgrade? Oh, it didn't actually attach. Oh my god, this world's getting lag here every second. That will go there, and we just need to dye it the right color. And now that's all gone in, and it's slowly starting to crush. Oh my god, I've never seen this laser before. Is this new? Oh my god, I've never seen this thing have this green laser before. Oh, that's pretty cool. But you should start making polonium. Yes, and I actually need to give these guys upgrades too. And there we go. And the waste should be being sent over here to these barrels. As you can see, seven millibuckets. And it's being evenly distributed between every barrel here. And I'm pretty sure these barrels also delete a uh, 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 millibucket every second. I'm pretty sure. Let me look up uh, the waste barrel. It should say what it does. Um, decay rate one millibucket. Oh, it's one millibucket every 20 ticks. So every second there is a millibucket being deleted. So that's pretty good for us. I think you see there's nothing in the barrels anymore. So perfect. This setup here is working. Now, it'll take a bit of time for enough polonium to be built up to actually make the SPS. So I'm going to be sitting here a while waiting for it to all be uh, generated. So, beer be. Okay, a few hours later and we have finally produced enough polonium and plutonium. And you might notice there's a bit of change here. I have upgraded the actual boiler setup here. So we can actually have a higher burn rate. Before we only had a burn rate of 30. Now we have a burn rate of 160 in each reactor and you can see there's plenty of ports here for pulling out the sodium and pumping the sodium back in our main issue is literally just throughput we're just not pulling out the stuff fast enough and unfortunately i don't think integrated dynamics works with gases so if it was only a fluid well integrated dynamics would be perfect infinite flow rate infinite whatever but unfortunately that's not the case but anyway, this should do, and because of the higher burn rate now, we are producing a lot more power. 7.3 million FE per turbine. Really, really nice. And also, I've gone ahead now and swapped out the actual centrifuge that was here for the neutron activator. So now we're producing a lot of polonium, so we can start working on the SPS. So, uh, I think I counted it out. If we have a look in here at F SPS, we're going to need 38 ports. And we're also going to need about 60 of the actual casing. And then the rest is just going to be structural glass. And this might take a bit of time to craft, so we'll just have to wait. Right, there we go. We have all of our casings. Uh, the only thing we need now is structural glass. So we'll just grab like two stacks of that. And also, I just realized I'm actually not going to have any lasers on the bottom. So there's actually nine here we don't need. So that was a waste, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. Now we just need to grab out, I think they're called supercharged coils or something. Uh, yeah, supercharged charged coils. And we have 29 ports, minus 2 for input and output of polonium and antimatter. We need 27. And I should be able to make them no problem. Oh, yeah, that was very quick. All right, and they, could, they do stack. Right, so the shape of this guy right here, um, if I can remember it now off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure it goes like this. So we're going to have 3, 1, 3, 1, and then 3. Like so, and then we can just fill in the bottom here. Actually, if we're filling in the bottom here, I just realized I'm going to have to um, craft myself, I think, another nine more of these guys. We'll get them if we, when we need them. But let me just put these here, that in the center, and then that there. 
and we can remove that one and remove this one. Then on top of that, just two more because we're basically comping the same shape on all uh, six sides. So it should be OK. So that up and it's just the same thing over and over again. Right, there we go. So that's the shape of it. So we're basically going to have the SPS ports uh, once we fill in the glass here. And we're just going to put the ports like this. So there's going to be like nine on each wall. Did I really miscount something? Oh, wait, no, there's more. I feel like I'm after miscounting something. I don't know how, but I feel like I did. Anyway, while the last nine are crafting, we can put one port right here and the other port right here. So all the supercharged coils will go on these guys. And this is where we're going to have to put power into it now as well to make these guys work. Now, I don't know how much power. OK, I don't know how I messed up the numbers on this, but somehow I did. As I was saying, I don't know how much power this guy actually uses. So um, I'm pretty sure we can just set how much power we wanted to use and it'll just use that. But it should be OK. I'm just going to rebuild it just in case me putting on those last few coils made any issues. So we just want to grab out some cable now and basically plug it all in. Actually, do you think we should remove one of the sides here just so we can see inside it crafting the antimatter? I think so. Let's actually do that. Um, I know it was a bit of a tight fit right here with the portal and everything, but actually, do I teleport exactly where this is? Let me double check. Literally a block in front of it. That's okay. I'm always terrified of teleporting away from this area since like I don't know if their reactors are going to stay working when I leave and then when I come back to reload the world they actually don't export out their coolant or whatever and it has a meltdown. I'm always scared of that but I guess we'll just have to deal with it if it does happen. But there we go now we just need a point and put the point on top and we'll just disable the limit for now just so we can see how much power okay it actually seems to be drawing 160 million. So what we're actually going to do is put a limit of 5 million at the moment, just until we know how much power it's using. So using the configurator, can we? OK, so we want the input to be this side. So that's this is where the polonium is going to be entered in. I'm not going to connect it up just yet. Then what we need to do, if we have a look here at antimatter, to make antimatter, we need a chemical crystallizer. So we can put the chemical crystallizer right here. We can have the pressurized tube. Tell this thing here to extract and uh, also tell that to extract and then we can just grab some cable and then just run it down to plug in and then we can grab ourselves a ender chest. OK, well, the mob stop spawning, please. And that like that. So items auto eject out the right and gases input through the top. There. All we have to do now is just plug this thing in and off it goes. If I was to use a tube, not a cable. There it is. Online and working. Look at how beautiful that is. So you can see we're using 5 million and we're producing quite a bit of antimatter. You can see how fast this is going. So we are. Let's go actually have a look at our induction matrix and have a look at our power situation. So we're inputting in 30 million. Oh, OK. We have plenty of room to work with. So we can tell the thing to input half of what we're producing. So 5 million to 15 million. And look how fast it's making antimatter now. But it is going to take a long time because this does need to reach a thousand to make an antimatter. So I guess I'll be back once it makes one. And there we go. Our first antimatter pellet. We're actually kind of close to making a second one now, which is really nice. But... That's all we have time for, so I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and hit that notification bell while you're at it then as well. So, without any further ado, goodbye.